What brings you comfort? Maybe it's a place in nature, reading a book, or chocolate. All those things bring me comfort, but there's something that brings even more comfort than any of those two. We find it in Isaiah chapter 51. Today, I want to practice finding principles from Isaiah 51 by using the Isaiah map with you. If you're not familiar with the Isaiah map, check out the video linked in the description before watching this video. The Isaiah map suggests that Isaiah 40 through 66 can be roughly categorized as messages of hope for the exiled Jews. So that gives me a framework for thinking about Isaiah 51. The Jews are in Babylonian captivity, and the Lord is offering them needed reassurance. Look at verse 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found there in thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Zion is another name for Jerusalem. In other words, the Lord is saying, yes, Jerusalem, right now you're in a wilderness because of your Babylonian captivity, but you will be turned into the Garden of Eden. Can you see how this is a message of hope? Jump down to verse 7. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Can you see how this relates to our story on the map? The Lord is saying, don't worry about the Babylonians. They're going to be defeated by the Persians. Once we understand the context, we can then liken these words to our day. I don't need to be worried about what others say. I don't need to fear the reproach of men when I'm on the Lord's side. Continuing in verse 9, we read, Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in the ancient days and the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. These verses clearly allude to the Exodus. Just like God helped the Israelites cross the Red Sea, He will help the Jews who are in Babylonian exile return to Jerusalem. Again, we can liken this to our lives. God has helped His people before, and He will help you and me with the challenges we face. Sorrow will flee away. There's so much more we could say, but let's jump down to the last two verses of chapter 51 and the first two verses of chapter 52 and see if we can figure out what Isaiah is saying. I hope you're seeing that with the Isaiah map, Isaiah doesn't have to be complicated. In verse 22, we read, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord and thy God, that pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. Remember the context. The Jews are in Babylonian captivity, and the Lord says, I'm taking out of your hand this really bitter cup of captivity. What is he going to do with this cup? Verse 23 says, I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. In other words, the cup of bitterness will be given to the Babylonians through their defeat at the hand of the Persians. Continuing in verse 23, we see that the Babylonians have said to the Jews, Bow down that we may go over, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground, as the street to them that went over. The picture Isaiah is painting is that Babylonians are forcing Jews to lay on the ground so that they can stomp on them. But note the message of hope at the start of chapter 52. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Did you notice that phrase, arise, sit down? That always seemed funny to me. The Lord's like, stand up, sit down. Why all the movement? The key is to remember the posture of the Jews at the end of chapter 51. They were laying in the streets being trampled on. Now the Lord says, arise, meaning get up from the ground where you've just been being stepped on. Shake off the dust and sit down in the royal place where you belong. It's a message of hope. God is saying, even though you've been in this intense trial for decades, I will deliver you. 
I'll be honest, for many years, I read the verses we've been discussing today, and I really had no idea what they were talking about. But as I learned a little bit about Judah, Babylon, and Persia, I began to understand what these verses might have meant in an historical context. That made them so much easier to liken to my life. When you and I feel alone, afraid, like there's no hope, we can remember the Lord who delivered the Jews from Babylonian captivity. We can remember his words in Isaiah chapter 51, verse 12, I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Yes, there are lots of great sources of comfort, nature, books, chocolate, but the greatest source of comfort is the Lord. And I hope that this video has helped you feel comfort from him. Thank you.